So looking at excellence questions for sequences and series, um, two specific types, but in this one we're going to look at a point where we've been given two sequences, and we're trying to figure out when they meet up, when they're equal to the same thing. So in this case, Susan is saving money in her piggy bank, assume no interest. She started with $30 a week, or started with $30, so that's A equals 30, and each week adds 8 more than the previous week. So that's saying she's increasing it by the same fixed amount every week. So this is going to be an arithmetic sequence, and that is going to be a difference of 8. Her older brother has been saving for a long time, but he is now spending his money. Each week his savings decrease by 8%. That right there is a hint for me that we're looking at a geometric sequence for, his, for her brother. And to find our R value, because that's a decrease, we're going to take away, so it's 1 minus... 8 divided by 100, and that's equal to 0 0.92. And he spends $260 in his first week, so that's going to be our initial value there, our A. So A is 216, and R is equal to 0 0.92. In what week will, be th will the amount of money Susan adds to her baby bank be equal to the amount of money her brother spends, and how much will this be? So we're looking to see at what week, so in, will we have the same amount for both of these sequences? So the first thing we need to do is to write out the actual equations. So if we think about the arithmetic equation, it's going to be Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times D. And for the geometric sequence, it's going to be A times R to the bracket N minus 1. And we can just write in the values here. So for her, it's 30 plus N minus 1 times 8, and for him it's going to be uh, 216 times 0 0.92 to the power of n minus 1. And we're going to set these equal to each other because we want to know at what point do these two equations, these two sequences, equal the same thing. So you'll plug this directly into solver just as you see it, watching your brackets, making sure that you get the n minus 1 as a power. So straight into solver, and when you do this, we should get a value for n that is equal to 9.99 something, something, something. So it's not a precise value, and that's okay, because um, we're looking at two sequences that overlap, so it might not happen exactly on a set n, but what we're saying here is that it's pretty damn close to the fact that these both occur nearly on the 10th day. So we would round to 10 and say on the 10th day, they put in and take out the same amount. So part two of this question is asking us how much will that be? Well, if we know that it's going to be on the tenth day, we can use either of these two sequences to figure out how much it will actually be. So let's use Susan's and figure out on the tenth day she's going to start with 30 and we'll put in the 10 for n times 8 and we'll find out when we plug this into our calculator that you'll get $102. So on the 10th day she will put $102 into her bank account and sorry I guess it's not days that's weeks. On the 10th week she will put in $102 and her brother will actually spend $102. So that answers our question there. Again, setting up the two equations, recognizing arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence, set them equal to each other, put them into solver to figure out when they both occur. And once we've got that, we can then go on and find a sum or a value or any number of the sequence that we need. As a second example here, the initial amount of bacteria in a petri dish is 100 individuals. The population increases exponentially by 28% each hour. Okay, increases exponentially, that's giving me a giveaway here that I'm dealing with a geometric sequence. And since I'm dealing with an increase, it's going to be, for the R, it's going to be 1 plus 28 over 100. So we get 1.28 for R, for the first one. And this initial amount that's telling me my A, so A is equal to 100 for the first part here. 
After a certain amount of time has passed, the population maxes out and it starts to decline, following the equation Tn is equal to 8590 times 0 0.8 to the n. Okay, well, I don't really have to understand where that equation came from or what it means to solve this problem, but they've given me that information. So it's decreasing at that rate, it's declining at that rate, until the population levels off around 250. After how many hours do the bacteria reach their maximum population, and what is the maximum population? So same idea as before, we're going to deal with writing an equation for the first sequence, and then we're just going to use the second sequence that they've actually given us. We're going to use that equation, and we're going to set these two equal to each other to find out when that transition occurred. So we're saying that the bacteria is going to increase following this first trend, then at some point it will max out and begin to decrease. So we need to figure out where those two points, where those two different sequences come together. So writing the equation for the first one, if I have Tn is equal to A times R to the N minus 1, here I'm going to have 100 times 1.28 to the N minus 1, and I will set it equal to 8590 times 0 0.8 to the power of n. And like we've done before, we're looking to see where these two things are equal to each other, so put it straight into solver. And again, similar to before, we're going to get a number very close to 10, so I'm going to say and round it that n is equal to 10. So after 10 hours, the population has maxed out and begins to decline. Um, so after 10 hours it maxes out and be begins to decline, so we've got that part done. Um, but they want to know what's the actual maximum population that the population, like what was it when it reached its max. So we have to use this n and figure out that max. So again, I'm going to it, plug it back in to this first equation that we've written down for t10. And here I'm going to go 100 times 1.28 to the 10 minus 1. So we have, if we plug this into our calculator, t to the 10 is equal to 922.3 something. So we can round that basically to 922 bacteria. So that's the maximum population it reached before it started to peter off and decline down. And again, one thing to point out here is this, until the population levels off around 250, well, that information doesn't really matter to us. Um, we didn't end up using it. It's just saying that at some point this graph will level off at 250 and not go anywhere below that. But we've got our information. Again, set up the equations, identify whether it's geometric or arithmetic. Set it equal. If they give you an equation, just use it. Put it straight in the solver to find your value for n, and then once you have your value for n, you can look for anything you want.